Well, hello. I'm Timmy, um, sort of not very good uh, portrait photographer and um, occasional YouTube person. Um, I have something strange for you to see. Um, this is a Canon 1DX. Now, that's a bit strange, isn't it? What the fuck, you're thinking? Timmy has always had Nikons. Well, spoiler, I'm not going to keep this, but I am a bit of a bargain hunter. And when I saw this one, uh, I was kind of curious to try it. Um, I'd seen some reviews, said it was very nice. It is total flagship and um, this one had low to sort of 113,000 shutter, um, extremely nice um, cosmetic nick and uh, I'm probably not putting this in the camera frame, usually guilty of that. Um, Chris isn't here to assist me at the minute. Um, and um, uh, came with a box and a guarantee and everything. 600 quid. Uh, I just thought for the uh, real top of the range Canon 2012, uh, really good. So um, 18 megapixels um, and sort of like a super fast 12 frames a second and uh, you know amazingly good and versatile autofocus system. So those were the things. Now I was thinking I usually shoot my studio with Canon D3X. Oh, Canon. See, I'm going to get fucked up here, aren't I? Uh, Nikon D3X is my sort of studio shooter. Um, Nikon D3S and D700 are my sort of streak walkabout shooters. And I thought, yes, this Canon 1DX at 600 quid, that would combine the 18 megapixels, which is sort of more than the D4 and a little bit less than the uh, D3X. Um, obviously more than the 12 megapixels of the D3S. Um, so I thought that would make a, a great studio shooter and a great walkabout camera as well. Um, so, I mean, here it is, it's big. Um, but then, having said that, the D3S here is quite big too. Um, I haven't got the D3X here at the moment. Um, well, it's in the other room. Um, because this looks identical, so you can see what I'm talking about. So, in terms of walking about for street shooting, that's similar to this. Um, I tend to use this with a smaller lens most of the time this is my new 28 1.8 which is extremely good but of course that will not go on the canon so uh so that's uh, that's a that's a thing um you could put this on a converter one of these um what was it photo g or um the other brand of converter and they have got like image adjusters so even though this is a G lens, you could probably run it on the Canon in manual focus uh, with no EXIF data. So anyway, uh, that's a that's just a consideration there. Um, obviously, my D seven hundred is smaller and lighter, and uh, that would that is a smaller street shooter. So that is a, a good idea. I, I like the D three S though for street shooting um, and I've got this too um, so I was thinking yes the Canon it's kind of like a little bit of a combination of everything and um, it will be great but I guess it's the thing of not being able to put the G lenses on it without um, without losing um, autofocus and um, I'm not going to become a completely Canon guy I have got a couple of Canon lenses um, I've got the the 50mm um, STM here, which is a good little thing. And then I've also got the 85 um, portrait lens. So I did a shoot with this, uh, a studio shoot, and um, that worked very well. Um, I then decided I was going to do some um, 
some natural light sort of outside the studio door on the stairs. And um, at first I was having trouble with the settings because I'm just so used to the nickel ones and they're fast. And I find with this, when I get the rear screen on, because my asset's not that fantastic and I can't see stuff very well on the two small screens, I find that as soon as I want to look at a setting and kind of select it, the, the kind of the quick view and all the rest of it disappears off the big screen and I'm kind of frustrated and uh, can't change things. Now I'm sure I could take a long time and learn all the Canon tips and tricks, um, but actually I think probably uh, I'm just best off selling this on because even though it is terrific and um, it's 18 megapixel sensor looks very nice out of camera and it's got the high ISO and the super focus and everything so it would do all the street and uh, not very well today <coughs> <coughs> so it would do all the street and the studio stuff as I thought but I think basically um, because of lens compatibility and because of unfamiliarity and things uh, it's probably not sensible for me to keep this so um, I am going to um, sell it on. Uh, there you go. Uh, that's a bit of a, a cruel blow, isn't it? But um, that's it. So anyway, let's, since I'm here, let's have a chat about my, one of my newest purchases. In fact, I think this is my latest purchase, which is this um, 28 millimeter uh, nickel um, one point f 1.8 g lens now this is i heard these were good and i also considered the um the ais 2.8 manual focus and things but similar price um, i paid 269 for this and you can get that that ais close focusing uh, uh 2.8 manual lens for a similar price uh so i heard this was good um, but it's, it turns out it's even better than I expected. It's even sharper than I expected. Um, it's very sharp, wide open, um, to my standards anyway. Um, I have very low standards. Uh, it's really good. I am uh, very pleased with it. And uh, for street shooting, it's a cracking little bit of kit. Obviously makes the already large D3S into a bit of a lump but of course you can pop it on the D700 as well for street sh shooting if you want a lighter experience and of course being an AFS G lens it will go on that F to Z converter on a Nikon mirrorless I haven't got a Nikon mirrorless yet basically they don't strike me as being like really nice big quality well-made items like these big flagships so i'm kind of like loath to spend a lot of money on a z6 um, i'm a portrait shooter it's had a few firmware updates we're talking about the z6 now um, so i'm fairly convinced that its focusing will be good enough for me because i don't even need eye focusing and super tracking and things i'm a i'm a kind of find your focus point, stick it on the eye, um, go for it sort of guy. So um, I could at least do that with a Z6 and probably the Z6 will do eye focusing um, to the standards I need it, which is for portrait shooting. So um, nothing fancier than that. So I'm kind of like looking for the Z6 to cost, I don't know, about 600 quid. I paid, um, I paid about 500 for this D3S. I paid 350 for my D700 and about 620 for my D3X, which was a super bargain about four years ago. Uh, hang on, uh, yeah, four years ago, four years ago. So I've had that four years and I've been very pleased with that for the studio. Anyway, so that's my thoughts on Nikon at the moment. I may get, um, a Z6. A Z6 II, that's going to be a couple of hundred quid at least more than a Z6, is it not? And 
if the Z6 kind of does all the portraity stuff, um, that's probably going to be um, uh, okay for me. But but basically, I don't want to pay big money for mirrorless cameras uh, because I rather like these old things. And um, yeah, so let's go back to this little baby for a moment. Um, I am kind of sad to get rid of this because it is in beautiful nick it really is um, and um, I've you know with its 113,000 on the shutter it's quite young I have I know these are designed for 400k like a d4 but I've seen them on the internet um, for sort of uh, you know sort of half a million up um, even I've seen one on uh, <laughs> one on eBay that's uh, uh, quite pricey um, I would consider with a 1 million 200,000 shut account which is a bit crazy so um, there you are that's the the mad thoughts of um, uh, portrait shooting um, Timmy um, trying out a cannon and um, I don't rule out getting um, another cannon um, kind of a cheaper easier one I am a fan of the Martin Kestein channel uh, do check him out uh, he's he's interested in what a sensor looks like uh, what the images coming out of camera looks like rather than just the specs themselves so he is you know he very often discusses like the 5d mark 2 and mark 1 and the 6d and things like that and he's a fan of the d3s and the d700 and um, I think you can you can go out and you can make portraits with those cameras and you can sort of avoid the marketing push of the uh, of the kind of mirrorless uh, kind of internet influencers and things um, of course having said that I'm a bit I'm a bit gas focused and buying stuff but I'm kind of um, I'm looking for the uh, the kind of older good value stuff to play with and get a nice looking image out of camera rather than looking to spend a lot on the latest high tech so uh, there we go I am a bit of a Luddite I think uh, I get into a waffle don't I at the end and um, you know start rambling and uh, perhaps that's enough cheerio for now